Hello, my name's Jill Haley. I'm a musician and a composer, and I've been writing music for the last 10 to 12 years about nature-inspired places such as Shenandoah. So my background as a musician is in the classical realm. I'm trained as an oboist. I went to Temple University in Philadelphia and got a music degree. And when I got out, I started playing with regional orchestras in the area, and um, also played the English horn, which is kind of like the big oboe lower oboe and then I was also teaching lessons and um, way back um, when I first started playing I started playing with a folk player uh, he played the dulcimer which is a very cool mountain dulcimer um, kind of endemic to this area actually um, and that's where I started improvising with him then I met um, the guitarist who started the Wyndham Hill record label called Will Ackerman his name is Will Ackerman and he invited me to start working on projects with him and also other people on his record label. So it kind of morphed into that. Uh, meanwhile, married, I have three kids that are now grown up. And um, so, you know, when they finally left and uh, moved out, it was, gave me time to really pursue my art. So when I'm offered an opportunity to be an artist in residence at a, at a national park, I like to go to it with an open slate. I don't want to have any preconceived ideas of what I'm going to do, themes. I just want to see what the park has to offer. And every single time I've gotten a lovely gift from the park. Sometimes they weren't always what I wanted, such as in Glacier, it rained 28 days out of 30, so I ended up writing a lot of music about water. And in the Badlands, I had a lot of wind, so that had a lot of songs about wind. Here, I was just taken aback with the stillness, the peacefulness here. So the theme of this project is the stillness in Shenandoah. And what I do is I go out and I, I explore different areas of, um, during the day, um, take lots of photos and videos, kind of to document what I'm doing and later put together videos for the concerts and stuff. And um, then I go back and improvise on my keyboard and bring some old fashioned manuscript paper write out stuff and try to get some, enough done for when my pianist or guitarist come to play with me, we have some music ready to present. So inspiration for my national park projects or, or other projects often comes from an experience in a setting such as a national park. Um, for example, here at Shenandoah, the first day I was here, I, I walked down to Rose River Falls and just loved the silence. Again, as I got closer to the falls, I tend to go early in the morning, so the only people I see out there are the Appalachian people who are pretty serious. Um, and I go and I listen to the water, and sometimes I record it. In fact, yesterday I did go down and record the actual, um, the sound of the waterfalls, because sometimes I incorporate that actual sound in the music. Not too often, because it can get kind of cliche, but once in a while, I think only once I used bird bird songs um, when I was in Bandelier. So the inspiration really comes from a combination of an experience and then just going back and kind of free associating at the piano. So there's so much that Shenandoah offers me um, as a source of inspiration when I'm writing my music. I wrote a piece, unfortunately I didn't finish it in time for the um, concert the other night called Colors in Transition, which is <laughs> fairly obvious. Sometimes my titles aren't the deepest things going on, but the colors in the three weeks I've been here, I've been able to see such a transition. And of course, I've been trying to also um, capture that on video and photos, as well as in music. Um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the, the waterfalls are always good. I also am always extremely interested in the history. And the more parks I visit as an artist in residence, I learn about the history of often people being asked to leave this very land. And of course that happened here in the 1930s when this became a national park. So I had a goal to find out a little bit while I was here about a strong woman from right around that time. And Grandma Moses the painter came across my radar and she started painting when she was 78. And I thought that was pretty cool until she was 101. So I wrote a song for Anna and of course, things like the mountains, I mean, you know, Blue Ridge, I, and I didn't know if I wanted to do an arrangement of Ocean and Doha. I really did, but I felt like, my goodness, does the world need another one? But I just 
just love that piece so much. So I did an arrangement of that too. So what I did yesterday, I've been reading a book about nature and listening. I spent 15 minutes on Limberlost Trail being silent. Um, and except for the occasional person who walked by, um, it was wonderful. And as this book I'm reading told me, animals start feeling comfortable with you. They're not skidded, you know, the, the deer, of course the deer around here, I think they're pretty used to people taking their photos. But um, we watched a, a lovely doe just eating and she'd always look at us every time somebody would come and, and make sure it was okay. And we just looked at her and kind of nodded. But being quiet, that helps more than anything else. And it opens up, seems to open me up to getting musical ideas. So when I write music about nature, what I'm trying to communicate with my audiences when I go is first of all, just expose them to perhaps a place they haven't been. Um, this is a wonderful thing because many people come up to me after a concert and go, wow, I never heard of Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico. What a cool place. I think I'm going to go there. So that's one thing that I think is valuable. Another thing, and I just love, is when I have older people in the, in the audience say, wow, this reminds me of, of you know, when, when we were there. Um, the first night I got here, I met a couple walking up to the dining hall. And they said, wow, these, these steps were a lot easier 30 years ago. But they were back um, because it was special. The night I did a concert, there was a couple there very interested. And in, I did one piece about Glacier National Park. And they said um, they'd been married at Iceberg Lake and Glacier National, in Glacier National Park. And that just hearing that music brought that back. So bringing back memories exposing people to new stuff. And I always tell them it's very relaxing type of music. It's okay if you just kind of, I don't know if the word doze is right, but just kind of get into that quiet reflective state and um, just enjoy it. I'd like to thank the Shenandoah National Park Trust for the opportunity for artists such as myself and other people, painters, illustrators, um, photographers, to come create their art in this special place and share it with everyone. Thank you.